Look at this front end. I mean, it's distinctive, it's powerful, it's strong. The old Malibu, the best way I could describe that would be, well, a loaf of Wonder Bread. It was so vanilla. Now they've added style, they've added character lines, and they've added presence, which goes a long way to selling a lot of cars. All right, guys, we're in the hills just outside of San Diego. And Nathan, obviously this is the flagship uh, for Chevy, so it's not meant to carve canyons, but you're carving canyons. How's it feel? For a big car, it feels pretty good. Look, this isn't a vehicle that was meant for that. It, it's a boulevard cruiser. It's for long distance. It's meant for comfort. But I'm taking it on these curvy roads. The steering weight is ideal. Uh, it's electric power steering. But in this particular case, the weight is good. The feel is not there. And why should it be? You're not driving a sports car. And we are ironically in a Chevrolet Impala. We are. <laughs> Except this is probably what people think of when they think of the Impala because this is. is a 1964. 1964 SS. It's a beautiful car. It is a beautiful car. How much did this car inspire the new car? You know, I, I would say it's... Uh, it, it Both interior and exterior, our, uh, our design team takes concepts, ideas, um, visual appeal um, rather than individual elements, right? Um, they take uh, themes. So if you're expecting kind of a European ride, what you're saying is this is more neo-American. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. kind of an ev evolution of that American big sedan feel where you're more comfortable on the highway, but at the same time Unlike the old Impalas, which by the way, 19, late 50s is when it first came out, uh -huh. um, this actually can be driven through the canyons. Yeah, it can, and it'll do whatever you tell it to do, and there's good power uh, with the V6, and there's going to be two four-cylinder models available soon. But in this particular case, considering the vehicles it competes with, which, you know, Toyota Avalon, the Nissan Maxima, and there's like, what else? The, uh, Ford Taurus, of uh -huh. course, and don't forget the Hyundai Azera. Oh yeah, the Hyundai Azera. This vehicle feels from the inside like a more luxurious car. I would even go as far as calling this a discount Cadillac. <laughs> I'm sure that's not going to be a tagline that GM wants to use. I know, but that's that's how I'd look at it. Now, I'm going to ask you the kind of the engineering questions on because that's your job. Let's start with the easy one. Here's a softball one. What's your favorite part of the new car? My favorite part of the new car? Yeah is the seating position, the, the, just sitting in the driver's seat with, with all the uh, control I have, both of the, the ride and handling of the vehicle and the steering wheel of the 305 horsepower in the uh, accelerator. And then with the Chevy MyLink system, I've got control within my fingertip reach of, of all the, the radio stations, the contacts, all my, my Bluetooth uh, connecting ability. So I, I like the control of the driver's seat. And from an engineering point of view, what was the kind of the, the, the pinnacle you had to climb? What was the hardest part of it? Um, I, I packaging, you know, the, yeah. the uh, instrument panel has as many just to keep this, the, the, the beauty from uh, the outside and bring it inside. The instrument panel with its dual cockpit execution has many, many pieces coming together. And so it becomes a, a jigsaw puzzle of executing those parts flawlessly with zero gap. When it comes to interiors, there are a lot of people who say that General Motors has lost its way in the past and I would be one of them. This is different. They've actually put a lot of time and effort into molding an interior that, for the most part, is as luxurious as any Cadillac I've been in. And I'm not kidding about that. Stitching, leather, all the equipment that you need in a vehicle like this to make it feel luxurious is right there. There's great mood lighting. All of the components are good to the touch. They feel substantial. But bottom line, it's still a Chevy, so I might say it's a discount Cadillac, but I also know in the back of my mind, it's always gonna be a Chevy. And of course, it does share a similar platform to the Cadillac XTS and the, the Buick LaCrosse. Yeah, so I mean, these are all big GM cars. 
and they're very similar in terms of their not just size but their personality and yes okay a discount Cadillac I guess maybe sort of yeah maybe sort of <laughs> I do like the interior I think the GM is certainly up their game it's much more flowing it's much more elegant uh, it feels much more contemporary it doesn't feel like you know the old model let's face it was the wonder bread of <laughs> big sedans oh, right I, I really did dislike the old one inside and out we should mention the fact that last year in 2012 GM sold 170,000 in Palace but here's the but Nathan <laughs> but about 30% of those actually went to regular owners, whereas a majority of them went to fleets, like rental cars. Yeah, and so they did have this reputation of being a rent-a-car special, and obviously that model had been around a long time, so Jim had paid for the tooling, and so they are going to continue building it mainly for fleet sales yeah. as a business model, but this new car, they're saying, you know, this is no longer a rent-a-car, this is a car that makes a statement, we're proud of it, it's good looking, it's uh, expensive, because this car, the six-cylinder, starts at right about 30000 and goes all the way up to 40000 which is, you know, approaching Lexus and, of course, like you said, Cadillac territory. Uh, to be fair, the strategy we've employed up to this point was to sell a lot of vehicles and, and, and the profit margin was very low. So we think we've offered a value proposition, that we have a lot of content and a visually stunning package, because of that content, we're going to price higher, um, and we're prepared to sell fewer vehicles. We'd, we'd sure like to sell as many, but we're prepared to sell fewer, higher value, uh, higher profit vehicles to, uh, to the of, right segment. Kind of taking us back to this car, right? Because exactly. This was this was a car you would aspire to. Exactly. We're we we, we believe will be an aspirational vehicle in the somewhat cluttered full size car segment. You get tons of technology, so you get lane departure warning, you get blind spot monitoring, yep. you get uh, crash avoidance where the system will actually break uh, the car if it thinks you're about to hit something. As always, we are of course driving the top of the line model. This is a 3.6 liter Nathan and puts out 264 pound feet of torque and more importantly, 305 horsepower. It starts at about 30,000 and if you get all the bells and whistles, it can go all the way up to 40,000. But there are cheaper models, right? There are. It can go down to a little over 27,000 with the 2.5 liter four cylinder that's coming soon and there's gonna be a 2.4 liter e assist that'll be there as well. Hey Nathan, do you fit? Yep, I fit beautifully. Yeah, it looks like you got a lot of leg room. You know, they made this car 1.2 inches longer overall. Front end leg room is 3.5 inches longer. Back leg room, 2.2 inches longer. It's really impressive. And check this out. It's rather small in the increment, but this is the largest trunk in its class. Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> Dude, you could fit you, your family. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is, well, it's, as I said, it's one of the largest trunks in its class. <laughs> Yeah, you know what, it's, it's kind of warm today. Why don't you close that baby and let me cool off? All right, enjoy. Bye, folks. So will this car be available in international markets as well? Well, right now what we're planning on doing is selling in the Middle East and Israel, okay. as well as the U.S. and Canada. So right, that is the, uh, the extent of our marketing strategy currently. And when will it be available? When can people go buy they, The V6 will be in the showrooms in April of 2013, okay. followed, followed by the four-cylinder a couple months later, and the e-assist a few months after that. Well, thank you very much. Absolutely. Thanks, thank Todd. I appreciate it. Nathan, once upon a time, these big American sedans were kind of the bread and butter for GM. In fact, they still call this their flagship. And you can get it with every new technology stuffed into it. But how does it do in terms of MPG? It's very impressive. First of all, this has a six-speed automatic transmission that's very smooth and very efficient. It helps the numbers. 19 city, 29 highway. And you know what? It's fun to drive on the highway. I forgot how much fun it is to get in a big American sedan because because everybody's buying crossovers now and smaller sedans. I forgot how much fun these can be. I could see us driving this back to Colorado. Uh, I could see us driving this back to Vegas. <laughs> but we're not going to give it a rating because it's not fair. We've only spent a few hours with the car, so you'll have to wait until we get it to Colorado before we give it our usual buy at least it rent it or forget it rating. As always, this is Roman and Nathan. See you next time on the Fast Lane Car, and thank you for watching.